In this video, I'll show you what I think is the best way, the easiest and the cheapest way to upgrade the SSD on your 2013 to 2015 Mac. I recently upgraded the SSD on my 2015 13 inch Retina Mac Pro to a Samsung 970 EVO NVMe SSD. And with this, I gained a higher storage capacity SSD and a faster performing one. And all this for just $85. It's crazy, and the method and hardware that I used here is also compatible to most 2013 and 2015 Macs, be it Mac Mini, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, as long as it's got the removable SSDs. Anyway, let's jump right into the details. So before I cover everything on the process, let me just quickly cover the prerequisites. Number one, the tools. So in my case, I've got a MacBook Pro. So first, I need a P5 screwdriver to remove the screws on the back cover. And number two, I need a plastic spudger to remove the battery connector. And lastly, for the tools, a Torx T5 screwdriver to remove the SSD screw that's holding in the SSD. You can buy a MacBook toolkit on Amazon for $7 and this package contains all the tools you'll ever need for any DIY fix on a Mac. Number two, an NVMe SSD. I suggest you go for the highly proven, reliable, and high-performing Samsung EVO NVMe SSD series. You have options of 250 and 500 gigabytes, 1TB and 2TB. Now, if you can't find this, my next recommendation would be the Adata XPG SX 82000 Pro. Now, reasons I suggest these two are the following. First, insane read and write speeds. Second, affordable price considering its performance. Lastly and most importantly, this has been proven to work in this use case by many other users out there. I think that's the most important one. Okay, next, an SSD adapter. The SSD connector on the Macs are proprietary, a very Apple move, so you can just connect the, for example, Samsung 970 EVO directly to the MacBook. The other option would be to buy an SSD with that proprietary connector. Now, I fix it and OWC has SSDs like this, but according to reviews, they aren't worth the money. They're expensive and the performance is subpar. And I think that's the reason why SSD adapters exist. So we can use normal, better, cheaper SSDs on Macs. So the adapter that I recommend is the Syntec NGFF M.2 NVMe SSD adapter. Now there's a long and short version of this one, but even according to the company, they recommend the long version as it provides stable connection stable placement of the SSD and better airflow for the SSD. And this one costs $16. Now I highly recommend only going for SSDs and adapters that have been proven to work or else you're looking at possible problems like sleeping and hibernation issues, crashing or kernel panics, which I think aren't worth it for the money that you'll save. So just go for the recommended SSDs and adapters. Next, the Mac that you're planning to replace SSD on must have at least high Sierra installed. The reason is that Mac OS High Sierra was the one who brought NVMe support for this Max. So before you replace the SSD, make sure to install Mac OS High Sierra on that machine first so that the firmware and read-only memory has that code that enables it to understand and work with NVMe drives. Next, check your volume type if it is APFS or Mac OS Journal. This will be useful later on when you format your new SSD and it should match to the old format of the old SSD. To check, open Disk Utility, select the volume which contains your Mac OS, then check the volume type. And the last two on the prerequisite list is optional if you don't mind losing all your files on your existing system. But that's a rare case, so I included this here. First is a USB flash drive of at least 16 gigabytes of capacity. You will use this to create a bootable installer of Mac OS. And next is a time machine backup in whatever form that is. It can be an external SSD or HDD. Okay, now let's move on to the specifics and the steps. I've added timestamps on the description so you can easily reference to each part of the process. I've also placed all useful links down below so make sure to check it out. It will be products, useful sites, guides, etc. So step one, back up your machine to an external drive using Time Machine. You can skip this step if you don't mind losing all your files and starting on a fresh Mac OS. Its capacity should be at least the same or bigger than your current internal drive. Note that this process will wipe the external drive. So open System Preferences, click on Time Machine, click on Select Disk and select the disk that you want to use. Your external drive once plugged in should show up here. Now plug your MacBook to an outlet because this will take a while especially if this is your first time doing it. But thankfully we can run this simultaneously with Step 2 which is creating a Mac OS installer bootable USB drive. This is where the 16GB thumb drive comes in. Now, there is actually a different method in doing this and that is using the internet recovery feature on the Mac. But I think that method presents a whole new world of possibilities that might go wrong. So I really recommend going down this path. 
so you have an installer in hand and you don't have to rely on the internet for macOS installer. So go ahead and open the link that I've put on the description box and that will lead you to Apple's own site instructions on how to do this. This site contains the links where you can download the macOS version that you want and the instructions on how to create it into a bootable USB drive. Now scroll down and click on the macOS version that you want. In my case, it's macOS Catalina. I don't want to upgrade to Big Sur just yet because I might face problems with that. So I'm sticking with macOS Catalina for now. Now it will open the App Store where you can click Get. When it's done downloading, it's time to create the bootable media. Now plug in the thumb drive, open terminal, and copy this line of code from the site to the terminal. Make sure to copy the appropriate one for the macOS version that you selected. Then delete the characters up until dash dash volume space because this is where we will paste the path of the USB flash drive that we're going to use. A neat trick to do this is to open Finder, go to the utility bar, go to Go, and tap Go to Folder, and type forward slash volumes. Here you should see all the volumes connected to your machine. Now you can select the volume that you want, drag it, and drop it on the terminal app and that will paste the path to that volume. Now this process will wipe all the contents in the flash drive. Press enter to begin and it will ask you for an admin password if it applies and then just confirm the process by pressing Y and press return. The terminal will show you the progress while it goes through it. Then after that, the thumb drive will now have the name of install macOS version that you picked. And that indicates that that flash drive is actually now a macOS installer. You can now quit terminal and proceed to the next step. So step three, installing the SSD. So this is the very exciting part. So shut down your Mac, get your tools, get your SSD and the adapter and prepare yourself. Flip the MacBook, remove the screws using the P5 screwdriver. Be careful not to mix the screws as they aren't identical. Then prop the cover open. It will require a bit of force to pop out the clamp on the middle. And once you have access, first thing to do before touching anything is to remove the battery connector so we don't damage any of the electronics. Use the plastic spudger to prop up the battery connector. Then finally, the coast is clear to replace the SSD. Use the T5 screwdriver to remove the screw holding the SSD. Attach the new SSD to the adapter. Then the adapter to the slot on the MacBook's motherboard. Make sure to properly attach the connectors, making sure that they are snugly connected. So now you're going to have to use the screw that came with your adapter because this one is longer so it can hold both the adapter and the new SSD. And now we can reattach the battery connector and then the back cover. Step 4, boot to the bootable thumb drive and format the new SSD. To do this, hold the option key while pressing the power button. Release the keys when something on the screen shows up. So you should then see the install macOS blank version that you picked drive here or whatever OS you picked earlier. So click on that and that will launch the utility. The first thing we need to do here is to format the new SSD. So click on the disk utility then on the left sidebar look for the new SSD. If you can't find it, go to the utility bar, click view then click on show all devices. Now click on the drive then click erase. For name, I like to keep it the same as the old one so that's Macintosh SSD. For format, remember I told you earlier to check and remember the volume type of your system. This is where it plays its role. Pick the one that you previously had. So in my case, it's APFS. So I picked that. Then leave scheme to GOID partition map, then finally click erase. Once you're done, quit disk utility so it will show up the utility again, and now we're ready for the next step. Step 5 Install Mac OS. Finally, on the utility, click on the Install Mac OS option. This will show the Mac OS installer. When prompted, select the newly formatted SSD. This will tell the installer that this is where you want to install the OS. Just follow the instructions of the Mac OS installer. Then when you reach the point on Migration Assistant, select the option to restore from a Time Machine backup if you have one like I did, so I'm gonna select this one. If you don't have one, then pick Don't Restore. Just follow the instructions on screen and a few minutes later, you'll see yourself with the system up and running on the new SSD.
If you had any problems, feel free to comment down below and I'll assist you as soon as I can. If everything worked, then good, you're golden. If you're looking for other ways to improve your machine, check out my video on cleaning the fan, replacing the thermal paste, and using Max Fan Control as that one really breathed new life into my machine, keeping it cool and high performing despite its age. If you have problems with your MacBook speakers, you might want to check out my DIY fix on that that seemed to have worked really well for a lot of people. And that's it! If you found this video helpful, give it a like so others looking into this upgrade can find this video and learn from this tutorial. If you find this content valuable, then I invite you to subscribe as you might like the rest of the videos on this channel. That's it! Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one!